now let's get into the actual photographing of the bride and groom first off. And I know many times when we're doing photography, there's a couple things to think about ahead of time. One thing I want you to notice as we go through some of these images is also the expressions are very important. You know, I know we talk a lot about posing, a lot about we just talked about cropping earlier on, but now let's take a look at not only the posing, but take a look at the expressions. You know, I think a lot of times that gets overlooked. We get so concentrated on the cameras, the equipment, certainly post-production. But also when I'm looking at all these images of the couples, you know, I'm thinking that simultaneously, it's almost like it works together. When I ask to do a pose with a couple, I have them squeezing in together, whatever it may be, the expressions are always looked upon every single image. And in fact, this image here, she's right here posed by a window light. And same thing, I'm the one that asked her and directed her to maybe lips together, maybe softly look down. So everything is guided as you do your photography. So let's take a look at some examples for you. And it'll maybe kind of give you some tips and help you out when you do that. So let's start with the bride and groom. I think that's obviously, if anything, is that's the main event. I, ultimately, we can take all the detailed photos. You can take hundreds of photos of the whole event. But ultimately, it boils down to one main photo of the day, and that's pictures of the bride and groom. And I kind of like to give our bride and groom a variety. You know, I like to do the basic posing, which we talk about, where the groom is obviously, he's usually on this side, standing up, looking right at the camera. Bride's pretty much on the other side. But I kind of like to do a little bit more relaxed one. You can see here where they were probably already looking at me smiling. But once I prompt them to look at each other, have the groom maybe kind of touch his nose to her forehead, maybe ask him to whisper something to her. Usually by asking things like that, you get some real natural expressions. So as you can see, it all plays a role together. Now take a look at this here. Here's your basic pose, right? So I'm giving it to you directly. It's pretty much every wedding in the world, you've seen it. Bride, the groom's on this side, because usually because of the, the boutonniere being on this section, that's usually why the groom's pretty much on that side. Doesn't have to be, but that's usually why that rule of thumb came about. Bride's usually in this section. You know, they've got the bouquet. Many times you'll hear, well, does a bride need to hold her bouquet? Or the bridesmaids say, do we have to hold her flowers? And I'm thinking, yeah, they just paid for it. So we want to include flowers. But there's your basic pose. The modification here that I want you to acknowledge is a couple things. One, you notice our faces are a little bit closer together. You'll see in a lot of these poses here in a few minutes that I purposely had them together. Because if you stand up straight, and both people, they're kind of standing just like this. So I purposely, from the waist, lean forward a little bit, but lean together and kind of position the faces together. So this makes it look a little more natural. Now, if you look over in this one, we talked about earlier about getting the full length. So now you can kind of see either A, I can have them hold hands together. A lot of times I just love it when they're holding hands. Looks a little more natural. Sometimes you can have the groom just kind of turn his hand underneath and hold her hand. If you kind of have them usually where you can see the ring that way, right? So that's usually a great way to do that. Here's kind of like your typical, as they call the prom pose, so you're kind of hiding the arms. Mm -hmm. 